Now to a GMA exclusive. A first look at the nation's first onshore wave energy site. Ginger's in Los Angeles where they're about to flip the switch and start generating power with the waves. Say, Ginger. George, it's official. We just told them to flip the switch on EcoWave and Alta Sea's project. It's amazing watching those floaters fall into the water and as waves come by, they will ride on them up and down making electricity. Now, this is a small pilot project, but there is great potential for the future. If we could harness all the wave energy around America's coastlines, we could produce more than 60% of our energy needs. And here's the best part, it would all be clean. We just watched as the power of Hurricane Aaron's waves flooded parts of the East Coast. But what if we could harness that energy and make it into electricity for our homes? Tidal and offshore wave energy projects have been popping up from Scotland to just off the Oregon coast. But this morning, we are giving you an exclusive look at the first onshore wave energy site in the United States. The floaters are going up and down with the movement of the waves, pushing the hydraulic cylinder, which transmits biodegradable fluid through these pipes mm -hmm. into these accumulators. This pressure is going to the hydro motor, and the hydro motor is turning the generator. And that so just goes straight to the grid? In this pilot, it's not connected to the grid. It's just a proof of concept. But yes, the inverters optimally send it to the grid. If it's that easy, it's that simple, it's that cost efficient, why isn't it everywhere? So the major problem is the lack of regulatory frameworks. At the port of LA, it took EcoWave and Alta C two years to get all the permits and permissions. But now they have a plan. The plan is to go eight miles down the breakers, utilizing the energy of these waves so that they can make enough energy for 60,000 homes. Compared to solar and wind, waves are much more consistent and onshore is cheaper and far less invasive than offshore wave energy. But many experts say this technology is not yet efficient or cost effective. The cost is not only the installation and the maintenance, it's also the environmental impact the social impact. Everybody's concerned about noise and marine life. It's like a little boat. It doesn't actually make noise. It doesn't disturb the marine environment in any way. We do need more energy. We're seeing the first major increase in electricity demand in almost two decades, thanks in part to the draw from data centers for AI. It has to be a tool in the toolkit. I mean, when you look at the AI numbers, we need everything and we need it all to be renewable. We have to decarbonize. Now, Eco Wave Power is already sending power to the grid in projects in Israel and Gibraltar. So Ina says she knows the cost. It's $1.5 million per megawatt. That doesn't mean much to all of us, but she says that that is on par with wind energy. And remember, the waves, not here because they're not on the outside of the breakers yet, but waves are much more consistent energy. And here's a real fun fact. The the ideal wave height, three to six feet. But if you had a hurricane and the waves were too big, over 10 feet, those floaters, George, could lift up vertical so that they could maintain them, they could stay safe up there, and they wouldn't have to be injured in whatever storm. They'd go right back in and start making energy when it was safe. Oh, that is important. You mentioned this a bit in the piece. What does this mean for marine life around the site? So the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory actually did the marine study and they went deep into offshore wave energy and even with that when they've got the cables underneath they found minimal to undetectable impact to marine life but here's the difference with this onshore they're just putting these on the existing structures like this was a concrete uh, jetty kind of used for oil back in the day and now those floaters go in they act like little boats just bobbing up and down that's the only impact on marine life